Hi everyone, it's Raina. So this video is for those people who are Pisces, who are with a Leo uh, individual in a romantic relationship, or if you are attracted to one and you're wondering what it would be like. Somebody had made a comment about wanting to hear from the other side of things, and I just realized that in the future I think I'm just going to talk about both sides with each video because some of the same things come up and it's kind of redundant. So basically when you're looking at Pisces and Leo, you're looking at what we call an inconjunction. An inconjunction is 150 degrees apart and um, these two signs, uh, obviously not just Pisces and Leo, but there are other signs, you know, Sagittarius and Taurus, Capricorn and Gemini. Um, any two signs that are 150 degrees apart are considered very awkward. It's an awkward angle, and the elements that they represent are supposedly not really compatible we're not going to talk about it in terms of whether two people can get along, but talking about compatibility in terms of the objectives, in terms of the worldview, and so on and so forth. Because individuals can make anything happen. But um, when you're talking about fire and water energy, so Pisces is water, Leo is fire, they do have things in common. They are... Um, not afraid to express emotion. Pisces expresses it from their own personal standpoint, their own past, their own feelings, um, their own sensitivities. Leo expresses things with just a lust for life itself. And so it's more objective, but it still is a form of an emotional way of looking at things. And so I would say right then and there that that's something that they have in common. Now you might say, well, what's the big deal about that in relationships? But for a Pisces individual, even if they're with somebody who is supposed to be more compatible on paper, for instance, an earth sign, you know, there's a saying that water, um, I was going to say nourishes the earth. Uh, I can't think of it, you know, water, uh, <laughs> How does it say? I was going to say water waters the earth, but you know what I mean, moistens the earth and nourishes it, therefore. And um, that these two elements are very compatible. However, when you get into real life, it can very easily be the case that the earth sign person may be too dry for the water sign person, that the earth person wants to live life very rationally, very uh, unemotionally, and almost kind of cringes at any demand that the other person, that, that he or she emote more or to feel, whatever you want to call it. And that's just how they, they see life. And you may feel that that is kind of out of touch, that it's dry, boring, not juicy, you know, what's the opposite of dry, not, you know, juicy. And so you want that kind of thing going on. Now, we're not talking about drama, obviously, we're talking about emotions. So Leo, oh, well, drama, that Leo might give you a bit of drama if you're looking for that. But only the ones that are imbalanced, Leo wants to believe that life is like a play, that we are all actors. What was that thing that Shakespeare said? Um, life is, no, all the world's a stage. And I think Leo's, that's their motto. Because Leo loves to make a grand entrance. And, and therefore, they're looking for their enthusiastic audience or their biggest fan. And I think you, Pisces, can fit that bill because you're capable of being humble. You don't need to be number one. 
Leo, not so much. Now, again, if a Leo person is more balanced, they're going to be less of a hog for the, you know, the uh, spotlight. But sometimes if they feel threatened, if they feel like they've been ignored by someone that they care about, they may lapse into those tendencies. And a Pisces person is very intuitive, so they will know how to kind of stroke their ego, if you will, and make them feel that sense of that confident lion that they are typically. So what do you guys have in common? Creativity is a big one, and this is where you may even uh, run into each other. If you're in community theater, if you're in, you know, both go to an open mic night somewhere, um, anything, maybe a, even a class for drawing, you know, who knows. But there's a sense of wanting to create with Leo. P with Pisces, I think it's that pl being plugged into the intuitive side of life in general that sparks your interest in these things because you're just um, in love with fantasy, in love with things that are not the, you know, drab, sometimes, you know, whether it's unappealing or just the unpleasant side of life, you're more interested in being idealistic and seeing things in a brighter light. And this can mean that you gravitate towards um, art and things that put a little bit of a buffer between you and reality. And so, so both of you may take a lot of pleasure in this. And this is very important because then you have somebody who is going to encourage you to do this rather than, you know, roll their eyes, think that it's silly and stuff like that. I think both of these signs are fun loving and, um, that means that they can be like a big kid. Leo is certainly like this. The fifth house that Leo rules can be about the inner child and the inner child, um, is that part of you that never gets old, that is always full of wonder, full of joy. And when you're a kid, if you somehow have an experience that makes it so that you have to grow up really quickly, that can, you know, make the inner child disappear. And so the person may always be looking for their inner child. And if that has happened to you, Pisces, then Leo can help you with that because you tend to be fun loving yourself. But because Pisces is an old soul, you may have seen more than your fair share of tragedy or other situations in childhood that were you know, difficult, and maybe you grew up a lot quicker. Uh, and that's why you love that kind of escape as well, because you're trying to um, kind of look at life from the brighter perspective when you've already been exposed to other things. And I put down childlike as a, as a separate thing. I, I really see Pisces specifically sometimes in this way, even physically, if somebody has a prominent Pisces, they can look a lot younger than their, their years. But um, there can be a fragility in their look as well, especially with Pisces rising. I say with the female, the damsel in distress, who looks very feminine, looks like she's ready to be rescued. And the Leo person can certainly come across as very strong, and tough and things like that. You know, um, in the tarot, the strength card is connected to Leo. So there's that sense of being a leader. And as a fire sign, that kind of empower self-empowerment. And Pisces, you know, this could be like somebody that is almost like a mentor to you in a way. 
even if you're in a relationship, but you have to be careful because you, you don't want to have a romantic relationship with somebody who is also trying to improve your life because then it becomes uh, more of a, um, oh, what was that? Oh my gosh, I, I can't stand when I can't think of that name. Um, what I was talking about is there's a name that means somebody's mentor, somebody who is shaping someone, and I can't think of it. But anyway, you know what I mean. Uh, you don't want that type of imbalanced relationship. So that's one of the things where you have to keep in mind that even if you feel this strong attraction to a Leo because they seem like they're going to protect you or they seem like they are um, going to keep you, you know, that they're going to guide you, um, you have to resist that temptation because Pisces is open to um, being influenced by others. And that's not a bad thing. You know, some people are the exact opposite where, where they are like, you can't tell me anything. And they may be very individualistic, but they also may not um, be humble enough to take the advice of somebody that has more experience in a certain area and even see when that is a wise thing to do. They're so reactive about, don't tell me what to do. So you're, you know, that can also work to your benefit sometimes. It all depends on individual circumstances, obviously. So the other thing too is that Leo is generous, and this is important not because you are looking for somebody to hit up um, for money or anything like that, but you want, when somebody is financially generous, unless they're trying to control, and there is that dark side with Leos who have um, imbalances in their personality structure that they can use money, you know, like a narcissist type of individual, narcissistic type of individual. But in general, people who are generous with money can be generous with compliments. People who are stingy with money tend to like be very withholding in other areas of life too. And they may be that way with themselves also. It may not just be you. They just might become from becoming from lack consciousness. Leo tends to be someone who likes to live large. So this is the fire element after all. And so people who are fire signs, one of the things they never want to come across as is petty. So if it has to be with money, they don't want people to think that they're counting every nickel and dime. And that's sometimes where the generosity is coming through because they want to seem like they're just um, open and free with spending and that there's more where that came from. That's like kind of the positivity, you know, not being fear-based. But like I said, this can carry over into other areas of life and you can feel very cherished by this person. In a similar vein, they are warm. So that means they tend to be affectionate in a very demonstrative way. Of course, everybody has a different style of loving, and some people may not be very um, demonstrative, but you know that they care, you know that they are interested in your well-being. They're just very, um, you know, to themselves. They're not very, they're not very, like, um, affectionate in the physical like touchy-feely sense but it but they might still care however I think with Pisces you really enjoy that type of demonstrable affection now let's look at the challenging side of things I mentioned narcissism but we could say egotism um, and a similar trait is arrogance and self-centeredness. I put all those three as separate 
traits, but they're all connected. So egotistical meaning, um, you know, being, yeah, I think, I think they're very uh, similar. Egotistical self-centered, meaning that they're kind of approaching life as they being the center of existence. And all of us are really the center of our own lives. And I think that that's how it should be. On the other hand, I also think that we live with other people. And if we're trying to get with another person, we have to care about their needs and not how they relate to ours. So the problem with the imbalanced Leos is that they tend to, as all self-centered people do, tend to bring everything back to themselves. And so if you've ever had a conversation with a self-centered person, you know how hard it is to have it because you're just going to be sitting there listening to them yammer away about themselves. And I certainly seem to attract that in my life. And luckily for me, because I don't really need to talk about myself to other people, although somebody would say, well, you're doing it right now, <laughs> but I really don't feel that need. I'm just doing it now to, to illustrate a point, but, um, it doesn't, it doesn't really, it's not like t top on my list. However, um, for someone who is getting involved with another person deeply, you want somebody who is interested in you as well. And I think many people have experienced when someone has engaged them in conversation and then basically just talked about themselves and never, every time you try to mention anything yourself, they're not interested because they're, they just want to talk about themselves. And it feels really bad to be in that situation. Um, and I have tolerated it because I knew that I was never going to see that person again. I'm, I'm not talking about like a regular companion. I'm talking about just random people that I have met. But I have, I did experience that in a couple of particular relationships. And to me, those are people who have a problem with others, even if they have friends. It's not like they're totally friendless. Because some people, there's things they can appreciate about such a person and they overlook that. For me, I think it's a really big deal. And I want you to, if you have this type of person in your life, Pisces, to uh, really think about how it feels for you. And this goes for any type of relationship, even if it's not somebody who happens to be born under the sign of Leo. By the way, I didn't say this at the beginning, which, you know, I've already gone 18 minutes, if anybody is still listening. <laughs> and I didn't mention that this is also for the moon signs, because they can, I think a lot of times they can mimic some of the same things that the sun is with, you know, very subtle differences, but still similar enough to make it appropriate here. So the um, self-centeredness, egotism can be a problem where you don't feel like they care about you, even if they're not mean. They just don't, you try to bring something up that's going on in your life and they kind of dismiss it and bring it back to themselves. Arrogance, thinking that they're better than other people, I think a lot of Pisces would have a problem with that. Again, we're talking about imbalanced Leos. The ones who are balanced are very, very um, encouraging of others and, you know, to really shine their own light. And they are the biggest cheer cheerleaders that you'll ever find. They're very positive people. And this can be helpful for, I didn't write this down, but it's very helpful, um, Pisces, for you to be around positive people because you may sometimes get into a a bit of a funk where you feel negativity creeping in. And again, this could be um, because of someone else's influence on your life and you're taking on absorbing energy very easily. And 
the Leo person who is balanced is going to have a very um, proactive stance on life and they're going to encourage you to take inspired action or to uh, look at things and you know the glass half full and um, and so when you are around an imbalanced Leo and you see this arrogance you're not going to take too kindly to that because a lot of Pisces one of their ways of thinking is uh, they're there but for the grace of God go I and the meek shall inherit the earth these kinds of themes play out I think in a lot of Pisces people's consciousness that they're that everybody is worthy um, and it's interesting because it's it's similar in a lot of ways to Aquarius the sign before you that rules the 11th house of the humanitarian okay um, I would say the difference between Pisces and Aquarius is that you're more with the human suffering that you understand that um, some people have really suffered you have you rule the area of prisons hospitals past lives where people have experienced certain things sometimes trauma and so you're coming at it from a deeper perspective where Aquarius may be more of a utopian in terms of the the physical world and the structures of this world you're more interested in the inner workings and so people who try to exploit others who put down other people you don't like that and that's going to sour the relationship also temper um, now fire signs can be fiery I'm a Sagittarian however um, being a Sagittarian it doesn't mean that I would just blow up at anybody um, again passion sometimes these things can be very um, <coughs> subtle differences sometimes when people are very passionate about something they can get very heated but they're not being mean or anything like that what we're talking about obviously is somebody losing their cool and just because you're a fire sign doesn't mean you're going to do this you have to look at the if, if the sun is in fire is the moon in like in my case Virgo so if that Leo has a moon in Virgo or maybe a moon in Taurus or something they may be more detached um, and it might only be the people very close to them that have the power to trigger them uh, but in some cases you might be dealing with somebody who's a bit of a hothead and those people are going to tend to be the problematic Leos the ones who are arrogant because that all goes hand in hand doesn't it if you've ever watched any of those freak out videos on YouTube <laughs> um, I have to sometimes wean myself off of them because it's so addictive to watch people making fools out of themselves because of their arrogance but it's entertaining I'm not going to lie and um, that th those kinds of traits are people who tend to be immature but egotism temper like childish so I said childlike but a fire sign that is in balance can be childish um, just try to say no to a an imbalanced Aries and see what happens <laughs> so there you have it um, I think I've covered a lot that I wanted to I hope that this was illuminating for you thanks for listening if you'd like a private reading the link is below take care bye